Good evening, fans, and welcome to another exciting Channel 22 sports presentation. I'm Rufus Washington, joined by Renard Ricks, Sebastian Spencer, and the chosen one, Rayshawn Haylock. We're here at Lawndale High School, home of the Cardinals, as they host the Centennial Apaches in this Pioneer League matchup. Believe it or not, Lawndale still hoping for a playoff shot, even though they come in 10 and 16, 3 and 6 overall, a chance to go for third place. They're playing the Apaches. But let's talk first about these Lawndale Cardinals. Renard? Well, I'll tell you, we had a chance to talk to Coach Marks, and he's very optimistic about his chances tonight, Rufus. He feels like his team does have a chance to make it into the CIF playoffs. We think it's a long shot. He needs some help from some of the other Pioneer League teams, and we hope he'll get that. On the other hand, this should be a game for pride. Both of these teams coming in, having a terrible league record with a chance to get out of the cellar, if you will, and we hope it'll be an exciting game. We think if everybody stick around, it'll be a lot of fun. Sebastian, your thoughts in terms of Lawndale and also the Excuse me, also the fact that it's senior night tonight here at Lawndale High. Right, Rufus. You talk about his senior night, and there are only two seniors on this team. So that's very big and shows the youth for this Lawndale team. And they have a lot of growth and a lot of room for improvement. But like I said, only two seniors tonight, and they're going to look to hold it down for the whole team tonight. So look for them. Rashawn, Centennial, a year ago, 28-8. and eight. Sectional finals, state finals. Came up losing on both, but boy, what a drop off this year to come in at 10 and 16, three and six as well. Absolutely, Rufus, you just said it, 28 and eight. A year ago, this team made it all the way to the Southern California Regional Finals. That's just one game away from the state championship. This year, not so much. They had a lot of guys leave. Three guys from that team went on to go to play Division One. Two of them playing football right now, however, but they were led by Deontay Burton a year ago. Just one guy back from that team last season, and that's Keith Smith, starting point guard, who coincidentally, the first meeting against Lawndale did not play. So they're expecting big things out of him tonight. They think he could be a difference maker. And if so, maybe these Apaches come up with a W here tonight against Lawndale. Well, you know, last year Lawndale lost twice to Centennial by huge margins, 30 and 40 points respectively. They're expecting to win tonight, though, especially with the crowd, Renard. What will they have to do to pull off a W and, in fact, return the favor by beating Centennial twice this season? Well, in our chat with Coach Marks, he alluded to the fact they've got to play defense, and that means getting back on the defensive rebound. This Centennial team loves to run, and Coach Marks is greatly concerned about his team getting back and playing defense. He says, Rufus, if he can keep this game in the 40s, he thinks he can come away with a win. Sebastian, what do you think about uh, the Cardinals' possibilities tonight? Uh, you know what, last time we were here when we saw the Lionel Cardinals play against Hawthorne, you know, they played very gritty and, you know, played very determined in that second half. And we need to see that second half performance that they had against Hawthorne all night tonight against Centennial because it's going to be a running team like, like Renard said. And, you know, they, if they just come out ready to play, they should be fine. All right. Rashawn, your final thought. You've always got your finger on the pulse of things. How do you see this one working out tonight? I think it's going to be a very competitive game, but you're playing here at home on senior night. Centennial has definitely got their work cut out for them tonight. This is a playoff game for these Cardinals. We talked about it earlier on today. A win here tonight and then getting some loss with a Torrance loss. They'll be tied for third, and they might be able to squeak their way into the postseason. So that's what they're playing for tonight. For Centennial, this is it. Fans, there you have it. What promises to be another exciting Channel 22 matchup is coming your way as the Centennial Apaches come into Lawndale High School to take on the Cardinals right here on Hawthorne's Community Cable Channel 22. Tip-off coming in just a moment. Good evening, fans, and welcome to another exciting Channel 22 sports presentation here at Lawndale High School, home of the Lawndale Cardinals, as they will be hosting their Pioneer League opponent, the Apaches of Centennial, who made the visit over from Compton. It is senior night. We Let us mention right off the top, two young men, uh, Renard, whom this is a special occasion for them because in all likelihood, it is their final home appearance 
They've both been a part of the program. One young man, Aaron Key, just in his first year as a senior, but has made some heck of a contributions. The other young man, Jalen Arnett, I'm sure we'll see both of them tonight. It's a special night for them. They were recognized prior to the start of the game, so we congratulate and commend them on their senior season and their senior night tonight. And you know, Rufus, I would like to also give a shout out to their parents because truly they have probably been the driving force for these young men to accomplish what they've done thus far. And uh, it's just a true attribute to the young men's parents for sticking it out and finishing high school. And I think that's something that every parent looks forward to. And it's certainly, a, 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 and it's a special moment for them. Uh, and it's always a treat and a special moment for us to be here. One of the things we're gonna try to do is get a little technical work done, see if we can get I the volume up in Renard's microphone so I can hear him in my ear. The players are standing around waiting, preparing for the game to start. It gives us a moment to mention that our officials for tonight's contest are Victor Johnson, he's the R, and along with him, guy we just saw two nights ago, Dave Hubert over at Hawthorne in the Hawthorne uh, game. So there we have it. Cheerleaders are clearing the floor. The players, the Apaches are already out. They're waiting. And now here come your Lawndale Cardinals. Let's talk about who we've got on the floor right now for the Cardinals. Starting at center will be the senior, number 32, Aaron Key. Also on the floor is number three, Lamar Young. We know Roland Pearsall is out there. He's number two. The other starter is number one, Jalen Arnett. Arnett's getting the start tonight, and Munoz out there with him. Kept controlled by the Apaches of Centennial. Bringing it up for them in the backcourt is number three, Keith Smith. Along with him will be number two, Bernard Davis. Number 10 is Chris Townsell, the big guy. Da Daniel Idozik is number 32, and he is a big one, along with number 11. And now they're throwing us a curve instead, put number 22 out here. That's Trevor Dobson. That first shot doesn't go. And the referee Hubert says that it's going to be out against the Cardinals. And so uh, the Apaches, Renard, will take control. And I'm looking at uh, Idozik. He is a big, he's as big a kid as we've seen all season. He certainly is a big man and looks like someone that they're going to have to really deal with tonight especially his presence in the paint. That shot put up by Pearsall doesn't go. They get back on defense, so good uh, defense, defensive transition for the Cardinals. Over to Idozik, he looks inside to Smith. Smith puts it up, doesn't nice. go. Menuno's pushing it up. He's got it, keeps it himself, puts it up, and boy, they're gonna call offensive foul. The referee, Victor Johnson, with the signal. And they'll wipe away that bucket, and that's a tough break for the Cardinals as they're trying to get started here. It looks a little rough early. So still a scoreless first quarter. We're only a minute into it, though, fans. So we're trying to get our sound here squared away just a little bit so Renard and I can hear one another. That shot goes up and it's gonna be off of the Cardinals. So inbounded underneath their own basket, the Apaches. So both teams seem to be struggling here. Rufus trying to get their offense started. So the Apaches pull it out. Now they look inside to the big guy, and he blows a layup, takes another shot at it, and the young man, Aaron Key, on the foul. So the big guy, Idozik, with an opportunity for a three-point play as he scores the first basket of tonight's contest. And he's the one we want to keep our eye on tonight because clearly Coach Malikin knows this big guy has got to have a strong presence if his team is going to be successful. Good looking stroke on the free throw, Renard. So that gives the, the Apaches an early 3 0 lead. As we mentioned, this team a year ago, a championship level team, having fallen on hard times this season, though. 
as they come into the night's contest. 10 and 16 overall, uh, three and six in Bay League. In fact, they and Lawndale sport very, well, Lawndale's 10 and 15 and three and six in league competition. So identical league records, but clearly uh, the Apaches have a better overall record and we'll see if that has any effect on the game tonight. One thing I like about Centennial, they're coming in after a two game winning streak and the coach Milligan feels like this is a big turning point game for his team. Pearsall loses on the turnover. It's gonna be too much the other way. They were trying to hit Brandon Davis on a sprint out. Just led him a little bit too much. Two minutes into the contest. Three Cardinals still not on the board yet. That's Eric Gray. He goes baseline. Gray, one of the better players, puts it up. Can't get it to go. And now you'll have a breakaway layup being scored by Bernard Davis. So Davis able to score after the big block inside by Edozi, and truly he is making his presence known early in the paint. Well, he certainly is, and right now with a five-nothing lead, the Apaches of Centennial. And Coach uh, Marks there, as you see him in the screen, admonishing his team. This is one of the things he talked to us about. His team has got to get back on defense or they're gonna be fighting an uphill battle all night long. So hopefully they can figure out some strategy to try to slow this Apache team down because clearly they've off to the running it races here early and uh, falling down five to nothing here early as both teams seem to be struggling a little bit with their offense but clearly the Apaches have something going and it will be important now that on the other hand that Lawndale can kind of counter that and get into their offense. Well, we're still here in the early going, so lots of time left here even in the first quarter. Carlos just got to get some momentum going. They give it out to the big man, Keith. Nice cross court pass over to his teammate, Lamar Young, Young dribbles out top. Penetrates the lane, now they say travel with the ball. So Man. that's a turnover that's gonna go the other way and now a couple of substitutes come on. Going off is a senior, Jalen Arnett, coming on is number 10, Chris Munoz, along with Romeo Bryant. So you had the two seniors to go out and now the starting lineup is in there for Coach Marks. He realizes he can't fall behind too much further. Here's a turnover. Munoz with the hesitation step, takes it up. Thought he was fouled, doesn't get a call. Now we come back the other way, the Apaches running. That shot blocked, but the big man underneath puts it up and in, so that's two more for Edosi. And he does it with five of the seven points for the Apaches. He's off to a fast start here tonight. That shot put up by Gray. Doesn't go. We come back the other way. Dozic with the rebound. And the big man making his presence feel all over the court, both offensively and defense. They shot say, taken by Keith Smith. Doesn't go. Comes yeah. off out of bounds to the Cardinals. Seemed like he dozy there in your screen. May have come over the back and knocked that ball out of bounds. And so the Cardinals now with a chance to steal. Get on the board here. Gray over on the left perimeter. Drops it out. Midside, Romeo Bryant with Munoz with the shot. Goes up, can't get it to go down. Guys got tangled up a little bit. Fish is gonna talk to him. That was Gray, and looks like it was number 11, Antoine Shepard, and it was. So you can tell both teams realize how important this game is early. Uh, perhaps that's part of why the jitters on the part of Lawndale, a little weak getting their offense going. They understand the magnitude and how important this game is. Coach Marks has made it very clear to them they must win this game tonight if they have any shot at a playoff. That shot put up and in by Bernard Davis. So between Davis and Dozik, 
They've got all the scoring. If I'm not mistaken, for the Cardinals, they must have gave him a three-pointer. Right? That yeah. was a three-pointer, Rufus. So they are shooting very well from the outside thus far. So there you see the replay there. And, and finally, Eric Gray gets the Cardinals on the board. He's fouled on the play, going to the line with a chance for a three-point opportunity. Oh, that was a big bucket for the Cardinals. They really needed that. Let's see if Gray can finish the three-point play now. In and out. So the Apaches back on offense here quickly down. Shot is up and no good. And there's your guy Munoz with the rebound, and he likes to get on the offensive board. That's his second thus far in this game. Munoz was a big contributor to this team last year, and he's right back where he left off, and there he is putting up a shot. No good. He's a shooter and a scorer. Doesn't get that one to go, and now the Apaches come back the other way. Turnover as Antoine Shepard loses the handle on it. So you can tell this Apache team likes to get out and run. It's very important, as we mentioned in our pregame, that uh, Coach Marks indicates they've got to get back on defense to slow this team down. He would like for this game to stay in the 40s, but right now, the way they're playing, it's going to be a 60-point game. Well, it may be for them, but the way Londell's playing, it's going to be in the 20s. Yeah, they've they've got to get something going. In the first uh, five minutes of the ball game. Indeed. So the ball will go out underneath the... Uh, that's a 16-point pace, by the way. That's, <laughs> that's not the pace he wanted. No, that's not the pace. He indicated he wanted it slow, but not that slow. And more importantly, his team is being just punished inside. But they'll get settled. They'll, they'll find their legs in just a moment. They're working at it. It's certainly a good up fake by Gray. Then pulls up for the jumper. It doesn't go for it. Dozik seems like he's gotten every rebound. Tonight. He seems to be the only man jumping for anything at least, and you can tell that height is having an impact. Wow, three he is. goes up, doesn't stay down, and coming away with his Cardinals. Boy, Dozik had the offensive rebound, That's couldn't it. control it, so the Cardinals catch a break there. Indeed, they do catch a break because he had an easy putback if he had been able to hang on to the control of that ball. Good inside looks by the Cardinals. They just not getting it to drop for them right now. That shot put up by Lamar Young. And we've got a calming call, I believe. So another turnover there. And that's one of the things that at least it's helping the Cardinals to kind of stay in this ball game. If you want to say down by eight being in the ball game. As you see Coach Marks there looking up at the scoreboard, he's got to be a little bit concerned that this game doesn't get away from him here in the first period. Exactly, and of course, one of the things he does is gets Brandon Pearsall back on the floor. Now he's got an additional guard in Jason Lopez on the floor. This team, again, only two seniors. We mentioned that Jalen Arnett and Aaron Key. So you're looking at the next edition of the Lawndale Cardinals as well, Renard, because all these guys will be back next year. And that's got to be very uh, positive for Coach Marks and the Lawndale Cardinals realizing that next year they should be a very powerful team in the Pioneer League. One of the things they got to hope for along the way is a little bit of size, though. They don't have a lot of that, and that can do it. That shot put up, beats the shot clock, comes off long, goes the other way. Bringing it up is Bernard Davis. He's got it out near half court, being defended by Munoz, passing late. Now that shot put up from the outside, that's a three-pointer. And that goes for Keith Smith. So Miss Smith with his first bucket of the game, and it happens to be a three. Wow. As you see, Pearsall missed that turnaround jumper from about 20. 13-2 is our score, 38 seconds left here in the first. Not a Lawndale Cardinal first quarter. That shot put up from the outside. It was a three, but it didn't go. So pushing it up is Jason Lopez. 
He waits for his teammate. Shot clock, men put to sleep here in the first quarter. 20 seconds left, 13-2, the Cardinals trail. Let's see if they can get something positive going before this is over. Well, you know, most coaches prescribe to the theory that you want to try to get the ball inside to try to get an easy bucket. But clearly, the big man, Edozi, has changed a lot of shots. He doesn't look like he's got this Lawndale Cardinal team taking second thoughts about coming into the paint and putting up anything against him. The big man has a couple of blocks already, and clearly, offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, they all seem to be dropping in his lap. Absolutely. The one thing that, that's a positive for Lawndale is that they're racking up the team fouls against uh, them. Let's see, will he get a shot off? Will he get a shot off? He got to throw it up. There's the shot. Oh, oh almost. Lopez Woo. threw up a shot from half court to try to beat the clock. Drew a lot of iron, didn't go down. And so what has to be a rather frustrating first quarter, uh, Renard, for Coach in 13-2. We got Rashawn over with the report. Rashawn, take it away. Centennial was without starting point guard Keith Smith in the first meeting between these two teams. But he said that really was the only issue why they lost that game. I'm talking to Coach Vadim Malkin before the game tonight, he said the real reason was and that during that time they were just in a bad place. They had lost three in a row. Overall, as a team, they lacked confidence. They didn't play hard that night. They didn't shoot the ball well that night. But moreover, he says. He has a lot of guys on his team that he calls not basketball players, meaning they hadn't played much basketball, they hadn't had much experience, and being able to play in that environment at home and called on to do a lot of things to help this team win was a lot of pressure, which quite frankly, they weren't able to handle being at home, in front of family, in front of friends, etc. They seem pretty comfortable tonight. They seem like they have a ton of confidence, guys, here in that first quarter. Thank you, Rayshawn, for that as we open the second quarter. Cardinals open it. Lopez giving it off to Lamar Young. Lopez dribbling out top. Key back on the floor for them playing the post position. This is one of the situations, you know, where you got the slender guy, Key. This is kind of like Kareem back in his day against some of the larger centers. You know, it's like Kareem against Shaq yeah, right now. Indeed. Um, being out there as he goes up against Edozi. And I tell you, they're not finding it easy in the paint. This young man, Edozi, is causing a lot of confusion for the Cardinals inside. They've got to be able to get up a better shot. They might want to try to swing it and stop so much dribble from the penetration in hopes that they can get an open shot and somebody can knock it down. So another basket for Smith extends the lead now to 15 to two here in the first half. A quick second quarter timeout being taken by Coach Glenn Marks. What's he saying to his guys, Renard? Well, I tell you, he's got to be telling them they've got to get back on defense, but more importantly, they've got to find some offense. And I don't know where he's gonna get it from at this point, because no one seems to be shooting and everyone seems to be scared to get into the paint. So they've got to try to figure out, can they find some open looks from the outside and in hopes that Gray or Pearsall or somebody can find the hot hand and get back into this ball game. Well, it's gonna be interesting to see, and I tell you, they're gonna have to start working their way back into it pretty quickly, uh, because right now, even though we're early second quarter, early second quarter, they're already down 13 points at 15 to two. Well, I've got the Cardinals unofficially with three turnovers, so they're keeping it down. But on the other hand, they're not doing anything on the offensive end. Many of their shots are getting blocked. They've got to try to get up a better shot. So let's see what Coach Mark's instructions was out of that timeout, see if they can get a good shot. And there's another turnover. When they tried to get it inside to Pearsall, that didn't work that time. So, but they do get back on defense. That's a good thing. Let's look at the defense they're running real quick. Looks like they're running a basic man-to-man. It goes way out top. I don't think he's a threat to shoot from out there. But that young man is. He puts up a shot. It doesn't go. Boy, Dozer tries to come down with it. Can't control it, though. That was Pounceau with the shot. There you go, Key. 
Key decides to pass it off. Not a bad decision. Looked up, saw it, do Exactly. Say, I think I'll do something different with it. And that was a smart decision, as you see Pearsall penetrating in the paint, able to get the defender on his backside, and he was able to get one up over the big man inside. And that was huge. Pearsall needs to get started. As you know, he's one of the team leaders, both in scoring and in uh, rebounds, as a matter of so fact. 10 minutes of action, they put up four points. That's another basket by Smith. Smith now coming alive. He's got eight. Lopez's shot doesn't go. Good look, though. Some of those are going to start to drop pretty soon. Right? And they're starting to get better looks at it, Rufus, and that's got to be encouraging to Coach Smart because earlier they weren't getting good shots up. They say he lost it out of bounds. I thought he might have got a reach-in foul, but our official uh, Dave Hubert said, no, nope, you lost it out of bounds. You see on the replay here the crossover, the reach-in, and it looked like he might be right, went off of his yeah. thigh, and that's a good call by the official right there on top of it. And, of course, the official on the play was Dave Hubert, as I mentioned before, joined by Victor Johnson tonight. Nice inside pass. Good the block by man. Key the first time. Can't stay with it. So he goes, it goes up by my count. He's got seven on the night so far. That's correct by my count as well. Pearsall now with the rebound trying to get something started. Puts up a four shot. Sure and did. That one was just a little bit forced. Thought he, thought he might have been able to draw the foul. Wasn't able to do it. 19-4 is the score right now. And you can tell wow, the top of the top. You okay. can tell the confidence of this Apache team is growing as many of those point guards are starting to put up shots from the outside. You see right there, Smith with the shot off the iron a little hard. And who underneath to try to keep it alive? You see him coming over the back there. Yeah. That's a young man. Now that young man, Chris Townsville, is just a freshman. He's the only freshman on this varsity team for Coach Milliken. And he tells me he is somebody to watch. He expects big things from this young man, of course, next year. As you see the turnover, trying to get it inside to Pearsall. And there's the doozy to knock it away. The doozy broke the play up. Actually couldn't control. He had a chance uh, to, to force the turnover. I think it caught him off guard a little bit. He wasn't expecting it. Eccles, Beckles, I should say, with it. Swings it over to Gray, Eric Gray, Jr. Got a push down side, inside. I think it's going to go against 32. He does it. Let's see. No, they call it on number 11. That would be uh, Antoine Shepard. So Shepard picking up his first personal. And that's the sixth team foul. I'm a little surprised they're not yeah. shooting one and one. Well, they will be on the seventh. That's right, I stand corrected. Nice move inside by Mr. Munoz. Chris Munoz with the basket, makes it a 19-6 game now. 13-point deficit, boy. They've got to get this with 419 left. They'll want to get this under double figures um, if they can as they head into the locker room. Now, I would say it's imperative that they get it down underneath double digits to try to have any chance of getting back as you see the young man. There. Keith Smith with another three-pointer by my count, Ray Raynard. He's got three three-pointers here in the first half. Munoz's shot goes up and in. So Munoz starting to get a little bit warm. Our game, 22 to eight, 345 left. They've got to start by playing some defense. They can't swap buckets with this Apache team and expect to get back in it. And they've only got two team fouls, so that means they can pick up the pace defensively exactly. just a little bit and get up in guys' shirt, you know? Get a little more aggressive, see if they can't get a turnover or two. Wow. And they just let the young man Smith sit outside and jack up another three. That's four triples for Smith now. He's got 14 points here in the first half. 25 8 to score fans, 3 11 left here in the first half. 20 seconds on the shot clock, running down for Lawndale. That shot put up by Munoz doesn't go. Well, I tell you, the Apaches are digging themselves. I mean, I should say the Cardinals 
are digging themselves a hole. I don't know if they'll be able to climb out of it. Coach Marks up with another substitution. That shot doesn't go. We got a push on the play. Let's see who they're gonna call it. They're gonna push. call, they call it Joe the back. And he's saying, who me? He's saying, look, I don't need to push Beckles. Beckles is six, maybe six feet, not more than 125 pounds. I just breathe. I, all I did was blow on the guy, and he fell over. And you can watch the replay here as he does it coming in. There's a slight yeah. push. He bumped yeah. him. Well, that's a will. bump. That's, that's a bump. bump. But yeah. you can see clearly he had the advantage once he got up in the air. And, uh, the officials say he came over the top. So they're going to tag him, and now we'll shoot one and one. And stepping to the line is Beckles. So Beckles first of the one and one is good. So down by 14. Got to try to see if they can get something here in the next two minutes and 45 seconds. And Beckles knocks them both down. That's a good sign. And now the Cardinals look like they're going to have a little full court pressure they're going to apply to the Apaches and see if they can maybe get a turnover here, Rufus. Well, they're going to mix some things up. I think one of the other things you may see before this game is over, I think I put both of the big men in simultaneously and get myself some uh, inside the game as well. Good pressure out top. Now, Idozik from the from the wing gets it to drop. Daniel Idozik, he's got nine points on the game. Big man is smooth down underneath it. Pearsall back up on the other end. Pearsall with four on the contest, 27-12. 15 point game, it's been in that range all night. Uh, Renard after a 13-2 opening for for the Apaches of Centennial. They need to get out on this young man, Smith. He's really starting to heat it up. And clearly, they're taking time off the clock, working it around and getting good shots. But the Cardinals can't continue to swap buckets with this Apache team if they expect to get back in it. That deuce put up, doesn't go. Comes back the other way. Rebound taken down by Marcus Millum. Big trip Trapped outside. Trapped underneath is Gray. Gray can't get it to go. He took a shot from the inside. Now they got numbers for Centennial, but they slow it down. And it looks like they're going to maintain possession on what was a possible turnover. Thought it may have gone off one of the Centennial guys, but the official's right on top of it. Says no, it went off of Alondale Cardinal. I believe they thought that might have been Mr. Gray coming over to get his hand in that cookie jar. And the official is right on top of it. Dave Hubert says it will stay down here with the Apaches. Chase Hooper, number 12, comes on, making his first appearance of the night by my count. Shot put up, doesn't go. That was Smith. Of course, he's got the privilege to do that if he's got 14 points in the first half. Munoz gets inside and gets the teardrop over the big man. I like the way Munoz is attacking that bucket and able, as you said, to get that teardrop up over the outreach hands of the big man. That's what they're going to need to do to get back into this ball game. And let's see if they're going to get a pushing foul. Looks like it's going to go against Pearsall. I thought they might have called traveling because there was he didn't have to gain any ground. He just was trying to turn around. Lost his footing, but the officials say you got to give him that chance to turn around. Well, it looks like the travel did occur first, but Pearsall was down and he may have tripped over his foot. Still only the third team foul here in Pearsall's first. 49 on the shot clock, 25 on the, uh, I mean, excuse me, 25 on the shot clock, 49 was on the game clock. Wow, Dozy just skied in there to take that rebound. That shot put up doesn't go. Eric Gray comes down with it, gives it off to Pearsall. He passes right in front of us, decides to slow it down for a minute as he's being defended by Keith Smith. Pearsall shot from way outside. Looks good, but didn't go. Shot put up, they're battling for it underneath. Coming away with it is Marcus Miller. Pearsall with it with 10 seconds left on the game clock here in the first half. Let's see if they can get one good look. Here's Pearsall's good look and go! Three-pointer for Pearsall. And what we talked about, 
That makes it a 27-17 score at the half. And boy, I can't tell you how big that three-pointer was, Renard, because, man, you know, we, as we see on the replay. Ball goes all out of the shot of the camera, but it right. drops right through the bucket. And Rufus, as you alluded, that was a huge bucket and certainly a momentum builder, we hope, for the Cardinals as they go to the locker room down by 10. And I'm sure Coach Marks has got to tell them, look, guys, we played well in that second period. We got off to a rough start. We've got to get out of this into the third period, have some good defense, try yeah, to get wait, some wait, turnovers, wait. get back into this game, see if they can make it a game in the fourth period. All right, well, fans, as we go to half, but before we do, we got Sebastian Spencer standing by. Thanks, guys. The Lawndale team came back in the second quarter with a little bit of a run there in the second quarter, and they were regularly down by about 20 points in that second half. I mean, those guys just cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. <laughs> All right, well, swinging back over oh, here, over. little Sebastian, he, he, he's in training, <laughs> and he wants a nickname. Now, now he sees why he doesn't have a nickname. At least he won't have one that he likes. Yeah. But at any rate, here's what we got, fans. We're getting ready to go to half, but the Lawndale Cardinals made a heck of a comeback in that second quarter to make a game out of it as we go to half. 27-17 in favor of Centennial, but the Cardinals are starting to flap their wings. Right, we're back to live action fans. Second half starting with the Apaches inbounding the ball. Cardinals on defense. Cardinals playing good man. Boy, they get it inside to the big guy. He does it. He can't get it to go. Key, uh, key underneath. Key does enough just to mix it up. Ball's loose. Still contained, controlled, I should say, by the Apaches. Now they get it out top. Smith, well, who had a huge first half. As you know, nice 14 steal. points. Great. Put your basket up and in. So, what a way to get the second half started as they pull within eight here in the very early going of the third quarter. And that was a real big bucket there for the Cardinals as they try to get something going here in this second period. Got to try to get some offense here early to get back into this ball game. As you mentioned, only down by eight. This is as close as they've been in a while, Rufus, and I'm sure Coach Marks had some stirring words for his team at halftime. That shot put up doesn't go. Boy, so maybe Smith has exhausted his shot supply for the night. Maybe he's a first-half guy only. We'll find out if he can find his stroke, but clearly that's something the Cardinals need to take advantage of. While he is cold, they need to try to get back into this ball game. Great yeah. trying to penetrate. Key with it. Key with not much of a scoring threat, but he does a number of other things very well. Boy, they tried to get the ball inside. They looked inside to Pearsall, didn't catch him on the break, so they missed the scoring opportunity, a chance to get within six. Roof is the right idea, just failed to execute, but that was the right idea. They drew the big man outside away from the paint, unable to get the ball inside to Pearsall as the Apaches now are on offense. Now with the ball dribbling left side, that's Shepard. Shepard gives it over to Dobson. Dobson doesn't go. He does he travel, but no call. That shot put up doesn't go, but controlled again by the Apaches and scoring the basket for them was number two, Bernard Davis. And you know, Rufus, that's their fifth offensive rebound already here in the second period. A couple of them were tipped, but they do count as well. That's five for the Apaches. And that is a recipe for this Cardinal team to not do well if they don't get on that defensive board. That, point, that foul rather being called against the Cardinals. We'll wait to see what they put up on the board. They don't put it up yet. Now we're waiting to see in this, well, they have it against the number one, at least on the board, but I don't see a number one out on the floor. And I'm going to guess maybe it was number 10, Chris Munoz, that they were referring to. So the Apaches now will go on offense, and they've not been able to really get anything started here in this second period. 
You're right, two and a half minutes gone. They've only oh, got a pair. Those are just big bullets. Wow. Him. He just bullied his way inside then, and the officials felt like he must have had good position as they draw as he draws the foul. He'll go to the line now to shoot two. Draws the foul on Key. That's his second. Of course, as Coach Mark said, as Idozic converts the first free throw opportunity, he's got 10 fouls in that center position. Key has already used two, just used one of the two that he's burnt. So immediately coming back in is Romeo Bryant. Oh, the big man, Daniel Lee Dozid, with a nice stroke from the charity strike. Not often you find a big man with a smooth release like that. Wow, for a good looking shot by Munoz. Tough break for the Cardinals as it doesn't go down. Smith being guarded by Pearsall now gives him over to Munoz. Smith doesn't seem to be as aggressive as he was in that first half. Might have something to do with those two misses he's had here early in the third period. Well, I got the feeling, Bernard, that he's got that shooter's mentality and he'll and there keep it letting is. it go. And wow. there you just is <laughs> on cue. Right there for you, Rufus. Five yep. three-pointers on the game already. Back out to a 15-point lead after the Cardinals had gotten it down to, what, eight? Rufus, I had a chance to check the scores book at halftime, and they have him with that one. That was his fourth. They gave one of those early ones to Davis. So, uh, okay. But uh, Smith, certainly uh, with 16 points here in the game thus far, he's really found his stroke. And Coach Mark says, give me time out. Let me talk to my team as we're starting to fall a little too far behind again. And they had gotten within, I believe you said it was 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 eight because we came That's out right. at 27-19. That's right, then it was 20, yeah, it was 27-19 at one point. That's and right. now it's back up. They've been outscored uh, by seven over the last couple of minutes. And I'm sure Coach Mark says why he called that timeout as you're looking to the huddle there of the Apaches. Coach Milliken admonishing his kids to keep up the pressure, I'm sure, as they seem to have found the recipe to get and have a lot of success. As long as they can get the ball inside, and as long as they've got Davis on the outside, I should say Smith, shooting with the accuracy that he is, they have no problems. Everything seems to be coming up roses here tonight for the Centennial Apaches. <laughs> Thanks to the fine work of our crew. Uh, microphone sounding much better. Indeed. Acoustics a lot better, so great. Thanks, guys. We appreciate the help. Indeed. Well, let's see if uh, Coach Marks now has a play designed here on this inbound. And certainly looks like he's trying to pick up a little token half-court pressure to try to just slow this uh, Apache team down. But They've been very methodical in setting up the offense once they come across the timeline. It's on those missed shots that they've not been able to get back and keep them off of the, I should say, keep them off the glass. They've had a lot of layups when they got out and ran. Here's Smith outside again. And he does it on the rebound, unable to control it, but down on the floor. Oh, you uh, love to see the big man get yeah. down. And what happened was there's going to be a foul call against the Cardinals because it those it was down on the ground and somebody just laid on let's see who they give that to looks like they give it well they put it on uh, number two that's Pearsall and that's his third person boy now that's a guy they can't afford to have in foul trouble indeed he's the only one who's really showed any offensive uh, paralysis here tonight and you got to wonder if they can do anything they've got to keep him in the ball game the Apaches taking some time off of the clock here, trying to get into their offense. Swing it to the wing, get it inside to Dozier. There he is. And in four and a half minutes, the Cardinals play in the third quarter very much like the first quarter, uh, Renard, where they've only got two points in four and a half minutes of basketball time. I tell you, this is a Cardinal team acts like they hate the first and third periods of the game and they're going to have to try to get out of this funk certainly in the next couple of minutes or they're going to be behind so far they're going to spend the entire fourth period trying to get back 
Eric Gray shot doesn't go. Now to get it underneath. Here's a shot attempt. It's put up and in. That's by number two, uh, Bernard Davis. So Davis now with seven points in the ball game, and he's uh, trying to help this Apache team extend this lead, and that's exactly what they're doing. Gray with a three-pointer, and I thought he got fouled, but the officials say no. So Eric Gray does his best to try to get the Cardinals back within striking distance. They're down 36-22, 2.25 left here in the third. And Gray has all of the uh, Cardinals' second half points thus far. He has five, and that's not going to be enough. They've got to try to get There's a palming call. Good call by the official, Victor Johnson. That's one of those things you have to, you know, kids see the professionals do it, and they feel like they can do it, Rufus, but right. they forget the fundamentals. they got to keep the ball, hand on top of that ball. You're exactly right, Renard. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's the most prevalent violation right now in basketball, and I'm telling you that from my perspective as a fan. You see players do it all the time. Indeed. And now we've got a double dribble turnover call that's going to go against the Cardinals. And those are the mistakes that are going to kill this team. They can ill afford to have turnovers trailing as much as they are. You see Gray trying to do something, picks it back up, and then now he touches it again. That's the call for double dribbling. Munoz with the loose shoe string. Didn't get a chance to get it fixed. Well, he's underneath against the big guy. That's a mismatch. That shot put up. It looks like, again, that was by uh, Smith. That was Smith, and he dozy. I like the way they kicked that inside to him. He kicked it outside, found Smith on the wing, and Smith got it up. And now Pierce all lazy in getting that ball, and the Apaches go the other way, and there you go. Bernard Davis with another big bucket on the turnover. So now it's a 40-22 ball game, 18-point difference, 120 left. Tough, tough sledding right now for the Cardinals. They're down by 18. Boy, they've given up an extra 10 after they cut it to eight. And Munoz unable to find the hole with that shot and the Apaches back down on offense. And I tell you, Smith makes them think about it. They need to get out, extend that defense. He dozy inside. Wow. Big man. strong move by the young man. Boy, nobody really really wanting to step in and accept any of the punishment that he's likely to dish out. Now you've got a turnover by the Cardinals. Substitute getting ready to come on for them. A couple of substitutes, as a matter of fact, coming on for the Cardinals are Jalen Arnett, num number one. Number four, Marcus Millam comes on, along with number 12, Jason Lopez. Now you got Aaron Keith. So you just got wholesale substitutions. The only guy staying on the floor is Pearsall. And I think Coach Marks has decided that with 44 seconds left here in the third period, might as well try to get some of these players who hadn't had a chance to play a lot a chance. Yeah. The official says Pearsall didn't get the position quite in time. He's going to draw his fourth personal. He's going to find himself on the bench or out of this game if he continues to play with the aggressiveness he's been playing with thus far. And of course, the clock and scoreboard operators not helping us very much because now they go from, it was number two with three to number two with two personals. So not quite sure what the facts are at this point. Well, the Apaches will keep it and take it out on the side here in front of us. And the hot man on the court, Keith Smith, with the ball. Pearsall tried to draw the foul. That triple put up and in by number 10. That's Town Cell. And that's the freshman on the team. As Pearsall driving in the paint and going to draw the foul. Looks like it's going to go against, uh, I believe that's going to be Davis who was reaching in. Well, certainly the guy on the floor, no, number 22. I'm sorry, 22. Dobson. Yes, Dobson in the ball game. He's limited his action tonight. And first time in the scoring column. I shouldn't say scoring column, but he's in the books now with his first personal. <laughs> so Pearsall with a chance to try to get his team here some scoring. And that's Pearsall's first point of the second half. Comes with 13 seconds left here in the third. And that's a recipe for 
disaster, if you will. This man has got to do more scoring if his team has a chance. Well, he converts a pair, and now he'll go to the bench. And that's probably a wise move on the coach part of Coach Marks because unofficially, by my record, he has four personals. And I think that's what Coach Marks has on his book as well. Shot doesn't go. Boy, tipped up. And catching a lucky break of the Cardinals. But boy, I got to tell you, after three quarters, I score here on Hawthorne Lawndale Street with the cable channel 22. Fans at 45 to 24. And now we've got Sebastian Cut Spencer with a report. Take it away, Cut. Thanks, guys. The Lawndale Cardinals went into that half with pretty good shape when they got that lead. Well, I mean, when they got when they came back from that deficit in the second quarter, but you see in this third quarter they built that deficit up even more, and now they're digging themselves a bigger, bigger and bigger grave. As you can see, these guys are down by 21 going into the fourth quarter. When we talked to good Coach Glenn Marks at the beginning of the game, he said he could keep this game in the 40s, and they would be good. This team has already at 45 points for the game. Let's see what they do in the fourth quarter. Back to you guys. All right, hey. Well, Rufus, the Apache scored 18 points in that period, and clearly that was not what Coach Marks had in mind. They have got to figure out some defensive plays or some defensive stand to try to crawl their way back into this game. It's a big uphill battle from here, down by a score of 45 to 24. Well, you've almost got a score on every possession and you've got to play good defense on every possession. As you said, down by 21 in the high school game where you play eight in the quarter. You see Munoz on the replay, pulling it out. Now back to live action and Pearsall with it. Pearsall blocked on the play. I thought he should have drawn the foul. No call made, he's slow getting up. Wow, Smith nice. breaks the ankle. Nice reverse dribble there by Keith Smith as he's able to shake and bake his way inside for an easy kiss off the glass. And I tell you, this Apache team, I believe, is just about taking the heart away from these Cardinals. As you see Smith there, as he goes strong, and the big man, number 32, over there, Aaron Key, unable to get his hands on it to block it. And you come back live. Coach Marks in there talking to his team. Don't know if he's ready to raise the red flag or the white flag yet, but clearly his team has got an uphill battle here if they plan to get back into this. Well, I think they're going to fight it out, uh, Renard, as best they can because we, we haven't talked about it in a moment, but they are nonetheless competing for what they hope will be a playoff opportunity. Well, they've got to really get something going here or they're gonna be depending on some other teams to help them out in the next couple of days. Look like we got a little better competition on the sideline between the cheerleaders here going on. The Apache cheerleaders say we can do a cartwheel and the Lawndale cheerleaders say we can do two. Exactly, and we can do a one-handed cartwheel at that. There you go. So we may not win the game, but we might win the cheerleading battle at least. Pearsall can't get it to go, shoots an air ball on the play. Boy, 47-24, our score right now. The confidence of the Cardinals doesn't look good right now. They need someone to step up, try to get some momentum here so that they can get momentum and build some confidence here in this fourth period that's ticking away from them. That one doesn't draw iron. That was put up by uh, oh, Townsell. And that could have been a turnover as number three, Lamar Young, driving inside. Got up in the air, drew the foul, and he'll step to the line and he'll shoot two here. But what I like is that Lamar Young attacked the basket. Here you see him going. Doesn't show any resignation. He pulled out on the right as he was going to the rim. As you look in at that Centennial Apache bench and Coach Milliken there, got to feel good about his team and how they're playing here tonight. 
The offensive, or I should say the missed shot rebound comes down to the big man, Edozi, and the Apaches go back on offense. And we don't have what class Edozi is in. We, know, we believe he's an underclassman, right, Renard? That's correct. I believe he's just a sophomore. Okay, well, I can tell you this. That young man has a bright future. I mean, he's got size, he's got strength, he's got moves, he's got a good stroke. And I like his poise and demeanor down low. He's not rushing anything, taking his time. He realizes he's got the height advantage, so there's really no need for him to force anything. He's been very successful with that, and no doubt he's going to be somebody to reckon with in the Pioneer League for years to come. Exactly. You know, and when you look at him, you can easily tell that he plays AAU ball, going to the line to shoot a pair is going to be Lamar Young. I mean, because he already has a certain game awareness, game presence uh, about himself, and that comes from playing a lot of basketball. And that's one of the things that Coach Mark says has crippled his team this year. They don't have many players that have played ball on a consistent basis for year to year. Most of these kids played last year, but they didn't play during the summer. Many of them didn't play fall ball, and so now here they are trying to get their groove and it's hard. And it absolutely many is. Many of the habits that these kids develop are right off of the ball, off of the park. And so it's hard wow. for a coach That's to a really problem. get them to play as you yeah. see the turnover there. So it's really tough for Coach Marks and this Lawndale program when you don't have kids who play year round. <laughs> and certainly, as you know, Rufus, as you alluded, if you're not playing on an AAU team, it's hard to have any success. Cardinals right now with an opportunity to play for some measure of respect. Great defensive play there by Marcus Millen to break up what was going to be a Apache fast break attempt. Indeed, and that's one of the things they can ill afford to do is give this team any fast break attempt. They need to try to get a little more aggressive, get some steals, because clearly this Apache team is taking the ball down and everybody's touching it. They're making sure they milk this clock for everything they can get. Then they get it inside to the big man for an easy kiss off the glass. Rufus, it's looking rough for the Cardinals. It's looking rough right now. Underneath is Eric Gray, can't get it to go. Gets it out top to a teammate, Lamar Young. Young goes underneath, he puts nice. it up and in. I like the young man, Lamar Young, the way he went inside then. Nice, I didn't know if he was gonna have enough to get it up past the big guy. He put it on the glass and got it to go down. Nice shot. And he kissed it high up off the glass. Look like the Cardinals trying to extend that defense a little bit. They need to get out and try, he can knock that ball away. He's holding it right in front of him, knock it away. Well, they're picking up the defensive intensity. Now the big man out top of the center screen. And a man. Goes the other way. The referee Dave Hubert says it's going to be Cardinal ball. They're down by 21. But here's what they're doing, uh, Renard. They're playing with a lot of heart. They're playing with respect. They're playing to show that they're not quitters. Okay. That, that's a great thing, and that's something that I'm sure Coach Marks has got to be happy about because that's something that really demoralizes a coach. When I've worked with them, or you've worked with them all year long, and you see a team go out and not have their best game. You can only hope that they give their best effort. Not every time are you gonna have everybody scoring in double figures. All you can ask for your team is to go out, give the effort 100%, and we can walk away with our heads high and feel good about what we've done. All righty, Rashad, take it away. Well, thanks a lot, guys. As you know, the Centennial team is a proud program. They dominated the better part of the last decade under then head coach Rod Palmer, winning two Southern, Southern California Regional Championships, a state title, and also a CIF crown. Well, four years ago, Palmer went to go be an assistant under co coach Dan Monson at Cal State Long Beach. But his assistant while at Centennial was Coach Malikin. And I talked to Coach Malikin about their relationship before the game. He said the two talk practically every day. They're best friends. They're the godfathers of each other's kids. And they've both learned and grown and known so much about each other. They've been friends for the better part of the last 20 years, guys. See, there you go, Rayshon. There's no cut in that guy, that's for sure. That's why he's called the chosen one. <laughs>
And he does do an outstanding job of finding the tidbits that sometimes you wouldn't know unless you watch the game. He absolutely does. Munoz puts up a deuce right there, 49 to 30. Our game score with four minutes left in the senior season of Jalen Arnett and Aaron Key. And you can tell Coach Milliken is giving his team instructions. You take that ball across the timeline, everybody touches it, milk it, and then you get it inside, get it up for an easy shot. The Apaches can't get it up as we've got a lot of defense in the paint. It could have been an easy three-second call, but the officials say they got their hands on it. They're going to jump it up, and the ball will go to the Apaches. In the possession there, boy, you see a lot of contact in there, a lot of things. The official right on top of it, though, letting them play. As the saying goes, ball's loose. Nobody actually even knows it's a loose. Well, let's see how much time they're going to take off the clock on this possession. Yeah. Smith says no possession needed. I've got the game to fill it up. Boy, Smith has put on a real show here tonight. I guess depending on which record you look at, he's got a ton of points. No matter how you slice it, showing five threes, that's 15, three doubles. It's six, that's 21 points. He is the man that is possessed and certainly the man of the hour here for the Apaches. He certainly brought his A game tonight. He realized how, how important this game is. That shot put up and in by Lamar Young. Lamar Young has been all of the offensive effort here in the fourth quarter for the Cardinals. He's got five points, make it six. Four free throws and a basket. Well, Lamar Young has more points than anybody for the Cardinals off the bench here in the second half. Young man starting to pick a pace up for his, at least for himself, if nobody else. It would be good to see the rest of the team recognizing that somebody's playing, and I hated to have to play and felt like I was the only one playing, Rupert. Jalen Arnett, the senior, underneath. Wow, man, nothing they can do against a big man. That's going to be a foul. Looks like that's going to go on Romeo Bryan. Good effort on Romeo, just got caught out of position. And that's exactly what happened, Rufus. Found himself out of position, trying to reclaim that rebound that he once had his hands on, but the big man, Edozi, had his better position, and therefore the Apaches got the ball, but they turned it right over back to and, the Cardinals. And you're right, I can't wait to see Edozi play next season. I really can't. Munoz way downtown. And that's what the Cardinals need a few more of if they try, want to try to get back into this ball game. Maybe they need to try some picks and screens for Munoz, see if they can get him off. And we've got a turnover just, again, what the Cardinals need. And again, you're right, they need triples and they need quick triples in order to get back in this. They're down by 17, 244 to go. You know, two or three of those in a 15, 20 second span, that means you're forcing turnovers. That's All right. of a sudden, you've got yourself a ball game. Yeah. Let's see if they can pull it out, fans. That's why you're watching right here on Hawthorne Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. And you know how momentum is. They'll yeah, think a couple of good shots, a couple of buckets, and they clearly could have momentum on their side, and that's just what I think they need, but unable to score on that trip down. Missed opportunity, and that's what you don't want when you don't get a good opportunity, and boy, the big man, he does it, just swoops in over everybody. Just cleaning up. That's what you call a real window washer. Munoz with a foot Again. on the line, so it was just a long deuce. That shot put up from the outside. That's a three-pointer, doesn't go. Munoz, Munoz pulls it out now for a second. Now he attacks the basket, loses his foot, and he's going to be called for travel. Had the right idea, but found a slick spot on the floor. It'll go the other way. So down there, down by 19. Coach. And Coach Milliken decides to make some wholesale changes as he's bringing in three of his bench players. Give them a little time here, perhaps uh, trying to save his team for the playoffs, or more importantly, maybe give some players a chance to get some playing action in case he needs them in the playoffs. Well, he's got Arthur Henry and Mike Nichols on the floor. That shot doesn't go. That shot was taken by Chris Townsville. Coming out of it, though, is, are the Apaches. And Townsville, the young man that took that shot, is the only freshman on this varsity team for Coach Milliken. 
And now you've got Keith Smith, who's had an outstanding game tonight. That shot put up from the outside doesn't go. That was put up by Mike Nichols, one of the guys who just came on the floor. Pearsall puts the shot up. He can't get it to go. Comes back for the rebound. Hits his teammate underneath who blows a layup. That was Marcus Millam. Looked like it might have been a little contact underneath, but the official said it was a clean block on the ball. We'll go the other way. Now we've got a, I think we've got a. Out of bounds, looks like they're gonna say the uh, Centennial player stepped out of bounds on the play. On the sideline, the official Dave Hubert from his position making the call. Coach Milliken seemingly questioning that call a little bit, but I'm sure he didn't have much of a concern with his team with the big lead as they have. Lamar, still up by 19. Up by 19, Lamar Young though, still playing as if it was a one point game. And that's what you love to see. Certainly the kids playing hard all the way to the end. And that's something that you can't teach it. Something kids have to want to do. And it's really an act. something you admire, admire watching. Fans really getting into it here tonight. And yeah. this is senior night for well, the that, And that's what makes it high school sports. As, as long as it's nice and good, clean, fun, you know, that's that's okay. That's that's just a part of what goes on. And we see that in all the gyms oh, that yeah. we go in. Oh, yeah. And the kids need some way to let off some of that steam. And clearly, this is an excellent atmosphere. And I think it's one of the things that I've tried to admonish parents to be more supportive of high school sports because clearly, these are the building years for these young people. And I think if their parents are here to support them, it helps and goes a long way in how your daughter and son end up being uh, outstanding citizens in the near future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because for, for most people, let's face it, whether you're seniors like we are of a different nature or seniors like these kids are, high school is actually for many, if not most, the most fun part of your, of your life. It really and truly is. I tell you, I think they don't realize, and I'm sure you can attest to it, but when you got out of high school, you wanted to go back. Exactly. And these young kids don't know what opportunities they are having here on the high school level. As you see, the Apache drive in the lane gets up a shot. And the young man, number 21, that's uh, Mike Nichols with his first bucket of the ball game. You know, Nichols, Nichols makes the most of his opportunity. All right, it comes late in the game, but he doesn't hesitate to go to the basket. And he converts the three-point opportunity. So the Cardinals now on the offense, trying to get up a quick score. And another turnover as we go the other way, and it looks like that's gonna get out of bounds. And the Cardinals will bring it back. Coach Milliken not happy about the way his team is executing down the road, as they certainly are starting to develop some bad habits as well. And the fans are going back and forth at each other here, having a good time trying to out cheer one another as you see the foul inside. And Going to the line, they're going to say a one and one that the foul occurred on the ground before the shot. So, Mr. Pearsall, Roland Pearsall, just a junior young man, got a full career ahead of him next year. Certainly is going to be a staple here for the Cardinals. 20 seconds left in the contest. The Apaches with the ball. They're going to get out of here with the win. Right now, let's see what the margin is. Pearsall with it, eight seconds left. Gives it up to his teammate who travels with it, but no call. That shot put up, doesn't go. They fight it to the very end, and that's the ball game, fans. Our final, 57 to 37, as they quickly turn off the lights. <laughs> you know, I guess that's what you want to do. No need to have any, have any recollection of this one. Suffice to say, Centennial really dominated 
from the opening bell to the final bell in our well clearly Rufus you can't look at this Apache record and think that they are a three and six league team you have to really understand what's been the problem and as we documented at the beginning coach Milliken felt a lot of his team woes started early in the season because they had so many injuries to start the season but now as he mentioned all of his team is healthy they seem to be on a real roll and ready to go into the CIF Southern section playoffs next week. No doubt they'll get an at-large bid, and that means they'll have to go on the road perhaps to play a tougher opponent. But uh, this team with their warrior mentality and certainly the legacy of this centennial team, their history of having been in the playoffs for the past couple of years, I have no doubt Coach Milliken will have them ready for the playoffs starting next week. On the other hand, for Coach Marks, he's got to be optimistic. Many of his team players are coming back next year, and I think if I had to voice his sentiments, he would say these young men need to get together this summer, play together this summer, play together this fall, and then they can have some success when the time comes next year. All right, speaking of Coach Marks, I know that Rayshon's just about ready, and I tell you what, why don't we swing it over to Rayshon Haylock. It looks like guys, I'm here with Coach Marks. Coach, I know this is not the outcome that you expected. T talk us a little about what happened out there tonight. They played very well. That's the third game they won in a row. They hit outside shots. The big kid stepped out, hit a 15-footer. They just played very well. It was a combination of, I think in the first half was our offense. We were just not, we were not patient. We were trying to do things we shouldn't do. In the second half, we cut it to 10, you know, and uh, it was their athleticism and their aggressiveness. They, they got a lot of offensive rebounds. They kind of pushed us around, you know, and, and, it, and it was a, a very good centennial team tonight. A couple of things that I noticed. Tell me if I'm wrong about this. It seemed like you guys came out, you're maybe pressing a little bit, and, and also their physical play. Did that, that surprise you as well? No, you, you look at them. <laughs> I mean, they're centennial, still centennial. They've won three games in a row. Obviously, they got a very good point guard, and we didn't know he could make those threes. We obviously went behind on the screens, and we, and we took away. He hardly had an assist tonight. And that's what we tried, but he hit a bunch of threes. Uh, we didn't have too many of our key guys play very well tonight. Uh, you know, a little pressure into the season. But I'm not going to criticize my guys because they played one when it mattered uh, Tuesday night. You know, and, and I said earlier about this league, every given night somebody's going to play well. We played them twice. They shut us down tonight. We shut them down the first time. You got a dejected bunch in there. What do you tell them? Well, they're dejected because they didn't play well, and they also know they have to perform at the end of the year to make the playoffs. So. Hopefully what I tell them on Saturday or on Sunday is they're in the playoffs, and they won't be dejected. Hey, thanks for stopping, Coach. Thanks we appreciate it. That's Coach Glenn Marks. And I've just got to console uh, a bunch of guys in there in that locker room right now, and definitely not the outcome this Cardinal team was looking for, guys. Well, it, it, you're right, Rashawn. Thank you very much. Definitely not the outcome they were looking for, Renard, coming in, considering they had held this team to 27 points the first time they played them, beat them 42-27. They were expecting a different outcome. As I say, both teams, you know, playing for some playoff position, uh, trying to get in as an at-large team, maybe as a third seed in the Pioneer League. Didn't work for the Cardinals tonight, but, boy, there are a lot of positives that they can take away from this experience. And those positives start with the fact that, finally, these guys have gotten some time playing together. Uh, hopefully they will continue that in spring ball, summer ball, and fall league in preparation for next season. But tonight just didn't work out for them, but boy, it was a heck of a night for the Apaches of Centennial. Indeed, an outstanding game for the Apaches from Compton Centennial as they get ready to go into the playoffs. On the other hand, as you mentioned, Coach Marks has got to be optimistic. He's got a lot of good young players that will be returning next year. So I think for Coach Marks, he's got to feel optimistic about the chances. But as you alluded, they need some work. And it would be nice if he could find him a big man over the course of the summer. He certainly would be. And certainly there's no bigger man that, 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 that was on the floor tonight than Daniel Ledoze. Just to run through the scoring real quick for Compton Centennial, then we'll give you the Lawndale scoring. But they were led by Keith Smith, who had 21 by my count. That's Edozic, right. the big man inside, was a load. He had 18. Uh, Bernard Davis had 14, along with three by Townsell and three by Nichols. So they had three guys in double figures 
with 21, 18, and 14 respectively. And you know, Rufus, on what I think was I was most impressed with was the big man he dozy. He had an unofficially, according to my stats, over 20 rebounds, and over half of those were offensive rebounds. The young man was just all over the glass tonight, and certainly he is someone to keep your eye on in the future. Absolutely. Now let's talk about the Lawndale Cardinals for a second, because this for them is where they start to grow and go from. Exactly. So here's what you had. You had Roland Pearsall had nine, Lamar Young with seven, Chris Munoz leading scorer tonight with 11, Eric Gray Jr. who carried the load in the third period for him, he had uh, seven, and uh, Rolando Beckles with a pair. That rounded out the scoring for them again as they put up 37 points, but it wasn't enough. It was close to the 40 that uh, coach talked about. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they gave up almost 60 defensively, and that won't get it done. But it looks like right now we got C and C ready. We know that that stands for the chosen one <laughs> and the cut one. <laughs> so let's take it away. Give it over to them. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, Sean Haylock here with Sebastian Spencer. Lawndale's playoff hopes went Apache way. At least that's what it seems like. You look at the numbers, it doesn't appear that what they're bringing to the table is conducive of a playoff team. But, hey, we remain optimistic. Talking to Coach Marks, he still believes this team has a shot. And so uh, we're going to remain optimistic until the, 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 the pairings come out Sunday and they say that Lawndale either is or isn't in the playoffs. Sebastian, what happened out there tonight? Uh, you mean this, this game started off bad and it, and it ended bad. And, you know, Londell tried to get back in it after that second quarter. They had a little run going into the half. But you know what? When they came out in that third quarter, Centennial brought that lead right back up with their three-point shooting from the guards. And you know what? They answered the call in the night. And they were persistent. I mean, very persistent from outside and inside. You know, that big guy, the big guy for their team had about, I don't know how many rebounds, but he controlled the paint tonight most definitely. And Londell... They don't really have anyone big, you know, or, you know, strong enough to contain a guy like that. You know, Aaron Key, a guy who plays center, but, you know, just starting out, how is he supposed to, you know, compete with a guy like that, a big muscular guy? A guy out there looked like Dwight Howard, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, Daniel Dozy. It was all about Daniel Dozy, the big fella down low tonight. I mean, he was physical. He got in there. It seemed like he got any rebound that he wanted. And, of course, Key Smith, his shooting from the outside was really, really – kind of would steamroll the Centennial team in the first half. Really, it was the dynamic duel. It was both of those guys. Um, playoff hopes. It, it, it doesn't look like it's going to happen for this Lawndale team. What okay. do you think about that? Well, you know, if, you, if gotcha. you're Lawndale, I mean, you know, you look at this as, you know, a win and a loss because, you know, if they don't get into the playoffs, you know what, they have next year. This is a very young team. Like we said earlier, only two seniors on this team. So, this team has a lot of growing and a lot of room for improvement. So, you know, they get in that, they get in the gym this spring, summer, come back ready next fall and be ready to play and, de and defeat and whoever comes in their way next year. This is a team who's getting better game by game as we see, even with the young players that they do have as inexperienced as they are, they still show a lot of poise in the game. You know, even when they were down, you know, they came up a little bit, went back down, they come up a little bit, these, these guys play a little bit up-tempo and then they go back down. So, you know, these kids, they, 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 really, they really are making something, you know. I think that next year these kids will really have a good, good chance to make a run, make a run in this, uh, make a run in this league. Hey, talking to, to Coach Marks just a little while ago after the game, I mean, and two things that, that definitely stuck out, at least to me, was the physicalness. I, I don't think Lawndale really expected this team to, to be able to come in here and to be that physical. Uh, tonight and then also it just seemed like they were frustrated. I mean they kind of just took Lawndale out of everything that they wanted to do here tonight. They were just a frustrated bunch Lawndale was tonight and of course the result was a loss guys. All right thank you Rashawn. I think that's a very good recap. Renard as we prepare to wrap it up your final thoughts. Well certainly the Apaches were the better team tonight. That was clear from the play and I certainly feel like the uh, Cardinals have a lot of uh, positive about going into next year's season. So hopefully they can get it together over the summer. And no doubt uh, we'll be back next year, and hopefully. And uh, we'll, I have no doubt that this team won't be 3-7 and seven in league next year. All right, great. Hey, a couple final comments, fans, real quick. Seedings for this 2011 CIF basketball playoffs will come out this Sunday, the 13th. 
at the uh, CIF office in Los Alamitos. We expect that the losing Olympians will get a playoff bid. We're still waiting to see about Lawndale and Hawthorne. So we know there's going to be playoff coverage somewhere. So tune in to Hawthorne Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. One final thing, it was senior night. Our two seniors, how about we make them uh, our players of the game. That's Jalen Arnett and Aaron Key. Uh, two men who contributed tonight and over the course of the season. And for them, it was their special night. And for both of you guys, we honor and recognize you as the Channel 22 players of the game. Congratulations. So, for my partner, Raynard Ricks, for Sebastian, for Rayshawn, and the entire crew, including Tug and Jeff and Tom and Manny and Francisco and Eric and Norma and Jose, for everybody associated with Channel 22 Sports, it's always a pleasure to have you join us. And until the next time, we say good night. Good night.